To put it bluntly, there is not one logical, common-sense government on this planet that would trust the Iranian government with a nuclear weapon. The chaotic and often laughable manner in which Iran conducts business and helps foment terror in the Middle East should be all anyone needs to understand. But America seems to be willing to allow itself to be used and mocked, with those who understand Iran shaking their heads in disbelief. Let us welcome to Midpoint President of Strategic Policy Consulting, a veteran foreign affairs analyst and author of the book, the Iran threat, President Ahmadinejad, and the coming nuclear crisis. Please welcome Ali Reza Jefarzadeh joins us today. Ali Reza, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Would you tend to agree with the way that I just led into this segment? And that is, quite frankly, that there are the preponderance of governments around the world simply would not trust Iran, and they know what the Iranian government is up to here, and they will not be fooled. Absolutely. I think uh, there's every reason for all the countries in the world, the international community, the Iranian people among them, uh, not to trust this regime because this regime has uh, over three decades of uh, cheating and concealing and defying the international community. Remember, all the major nuclear sites of Iran that the International Atomic Energy Agency is now inspecting. Uh, came to uh, the attention of the world, not by the Iranian regime or some other sources, but primarily by the Iranian opposition, the National Council of Resistance of Iran, that blew the whistle, the uh, Iranian enrichment facility in Natanz, the heavy water facility in Iraq, the underground facility in Fardo, the uh, 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 laser enrichment, and a whole host of other nuclear sites, including Sepand and Mojdeh and all of that. So, uh, you know, this is a regime with a track record that has been defying the international community. The reason you have six uh, UN Security Council resolutions against this regime is because the regime was not trustworthy. It was not complying. It was not responding to the unanswered questions by the international community. The reason that the whole issue of uh, uh, possible military dimension, which is a, a code name for weaponization, nuclear weaponization, uh, that issue has been lingering there. And the IAEA's latest report said that Iran has not responded properly to that question. Is that because Iran is cheating? The Iranian regime has been consistently cheating. There is no reason, no indication whatsoever that they have changed their manner and their way of uh, conduct. So uh, there is every reason to believe now that they are cheating as we speak. Ali Reza, with regard to all this, I heard an analyst earlier this morning talking about Iran. I did not catch the name of the analyst. I was listening on satellite radio and was talking about this very issue, saying that, well, basically the world and America is overreacting here. The Iranians actually have allowed some inspections, and the inspectors are getting into the country, and they are able to tell what's real and what's false and what's being done and what's not being done. When you hear somebody say that, do you have to laugh a little bit inside, some dark laughter, thinking that somebody actually believes that the Iranians are on the up and up and telling the truth? I'm sure Tehran has its own lobbies, its own uh, you know, uh, uh, proponents who are uh, basically uh, pursuing Tehran's line. That has been the position of the Iranian regime. If you ask the Iranian regime, they say, what's the problem? Uh, you know, we've been transparent. We have no nuclear weapons program. Everything is, is peaceful and is for peaceful purposes. But the fact that the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency itself, who have had access to at some level to the Iranian sites only after those sites were exposed by the Iranian opposition, they are the ones who are complaining that there is a whole list of unanswered questions that Tehran is not responding. Take the example of the, the nuclear site uh, called uh, Parchin. It's a site in southeast of Tehran. It's a huge site. Uh, the International Atomic Energy has been trying to go to Parchin uh, and has not been allowed to go there since 2005. That's nine years of denying access to the uh, IAEA to go to Parchin. If Tehran has nothing to hide, what's the problem? They could have allowed the IAEA to those, that site uh, before. In fact, Tehran promised many times that they would allow the IAEA to uh, Parchin. They never did that. And interestingly, just last month, uh, earlier this month actually, uh, we found out that uh, Iran is doing some very sensitive uh, testing there. They have uh, built two high explosive chambers that is basically used for uh, nuclear detonation testing. 
uh, that have been, uh, at least one of them have been transferred to uh, Parchin. We identified the name of the top nuclear scientists who have been working in Parchin. By the way, those nuclear scientists have been off limits to the IAEA. The, uh, the regime has not allowed the IAEA interview their top nuclear scientists or have access to key nuclear sites or to the, the, the key uh, documents. That's the nature of the problem that exists now between the 5 plus 1 and Iran. I've got about a minute and a half left here, so let me ask this. Do you believe at any time that the Iranians came to the table this time around and thought that they were going and were actually going to cut a deal? Do you believe that when they came to the table, they said, no way we're cutting a deal. We're walking away. We're going to lie our way through this, and we're going to go into next year and just keep laughing behind John Kerry's back? Well, you know, if you listen to um, uh, Hassan Rouhani, the Iranian regime's president, who had a press conference in a live uh, television uh, yesterday, uh, right at the date of the deadline, and he basically boasted uh, that Iran was victorious during these negotiations. He said well, a year ago when we came back to the negotiating table, we had two objectives. One, to maintain our entire nuclear uh, infrastructure, which we did. We wanted to maintain all our uh, centrifuge machines. We wanted to keep the centrifuge machines uh, spinning, which they are doing now. The second objective was to lift the sanctions. Uh, on Iran and a, a significant portion of it is already done and the remaining portion has agreed upon to be done. It's just a matter of time and place and, and the mechanics that we are working out. So as far as Iran is concerned, their objective has never been to abandon their nuclear weapons program. Rather, their objective is to gain concessions while maintaining their program. That's a sharp difference between Iran's stated objective and the P5 plus one, specifically the United States' uh, stated objective. Ten seconds. Do you think Iran would hesitate one second to use a nuclear weapon offensively? First strike. Well, so far, the behavior of the Iran regime has shown that every time they have had any capability, they have used it. Remember, you know, all the mm -hmm. bombings that uh, they have been involved over the past 30 so years. That's, so that's a yes, correct? that's correct. why it's so important to pursue a decisive policy regarding this regime not giving concessions. Take that as a yes. There you go. Ali Reza, Jeff Arzada, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. All right, short time out. We're back with the Money Master and more right here on Midpoint.